Imagine being among the lawmakers getting ready to certify the results of the presidential election last year when word came that an outside demonstration had turned into a dangerous mob and they were getting inside. Our Crown Force Catherine Heenan talked live by phone that day to two Bay Area lawmakers as the scene unfolded. In the midst of that day's incredible chaos, two California lawmakers agreed to talk to us by phone. Both had just been hustled off by Capitol Police. North Bay Congressman Jared Huffman to his office. Peninsula Congresswoman Anna Eshoo ended up in a locked room in a House office building. What they were seeing and hearing did not seem real. I agree, Catherine. This is surreal. Uh, it does not feel like the country we know. And uh, as bad as it has gotten uh, these last four years and even in the last few weeks, uh, I don't think anyone saw it uh, coming to this. Well, I didn't have a good feeling when I came to the Capitol this morning because uh, when I looked across the plaza and the Capitol, um, I thought to myself, the place does not look like it is really fully secure. She wondered why there were initially only a few Capitol Police officers given the scheduled protest by Trump supporters. Eventually, the mob made breaking into the Capitol look easy. Photos and video began coming in, showing people inside the offices of legislators, smashing windows and doors, trashing camera equipment, and on the floor of the Senate. I know you're pain. I know when you're President hurt. Trump finally made a statement, he told protesters to go home, but also said he could feel their pain and focused on what he said was a stolen election. Anyone who is looking to Donald Trump to de-escalate and uh, uh, make this right uh, probably should have given up on, on that type of leadership a long time ago. It's not in him. If I could uh, impeach the president today, I would. Congressman Huffman called this sedition. Congresswoman Eshoo was angry with some of her Republican colleagues. A conversation earlier today, a Congresswoman said, you know, maybe lawmakers on both sides of the aisle just so appalled by everything that has unfolded I today. I don't know how appalled. I don't know how appalled my Republican colleagues are. Really? Oh, well, that's, yeah, no. I want to hear more about that. I didn't see, I didn't see any hand wringing. I didn't see any hand wringing. In fact, we have to say to them, would you please put your mask on? This is a violent coup attempt. And uh, I think we, uh, we never thought it could happen in this country. It is happening right now. It was a long, long day for two California lawmakers who say they hope the country never forgets. Well, Catherine, uh, talked to the same two legislators today, one year later, and she joins us now live. Catherine, you know, they say time heals all wounds, but has it? Heal? No. I mean, they are both sounding, Vicki, as though this just happened and that a year has not passed. It was not only a traumatic day, uh, for example, Congressman uh, Huffman is now saying that he and his family would go on to face more trouble in the days to come. But it didn't end that day because uh, the death threats started pouring in to m many members of Congress. I had to relocate my family for a few weeks because we were getting threats and you know, creepy people coming by our house. So um, it was an unsettling time uh, and it uh, wasn't pleasant for any of the members of Congress or their families who had to live through it. I'm sorry to hear it hit your family that directly, Congressman. What kind of uh, threats were you getting? I don't want to be too specific, Catherine, but, uh, you know, they were um, they were very direct uh, in threatening the safety of myself and my family and making sure that uh, I understood that they knew where we lived and they laid out what they wanted to do to us pretty clearly. So um, that's unsettling. Uh, with Congresswoman Eshoo, I asked her to elaborate on why she was so upset with some Republican colleagues that night. For the, for the most part, as I recall it, uh, most members were, um, I would say, traumatized. So we were all experiencing it. But there were, there were a handful that, uh, uh, that weren't. And uh, uh, that was deeply unsettling to me. What the most unsettling thing in, 
in the hours that followed uh, when the speaker called the House back into session. She said, we have to demonstrate to the American people and people around the world that our democracy uh, is working uh, and we will have the vote on the uh, accepting uh, the electoral ballots that two thirds of my Republican colleagues voted against that. When I went home that night, I knew that it was going to be a rough road ahead. I asked uh, both of them whether we should be concerned about future threats, maybe leading up to the midterms. The short answer, they say yes. Grant and Vicki?